Welcome to my review on the Nikon D780. Taylor Jackson. Shooting 67 weddings last year. Taylor Jackson, welcome. So Taylor, you are well known in this community. You're an amazing photographer. Quick note before we get started, if you happen to be watching this video in between, it's a super tight window I know, April 1st and April 11th, 2020, all of my courses are going to be available on Patreon. So if you sign up for Patreon for one single month, I'm going to give you access to every single one of my courses, which is like $2,000 plus in value. You get my entire off-camera flash course for wedding photographers, my introvert's guide for wedding photography posing, and lots and lots and lots of other stuff. I won't take up too much time here. So to, we'll get to the review now, but if you're interested, if you're a wedding photographer, definitely check out the link in the description below. Welcome to my review on the Nikon D780. It is a camera that I'm going to be using as my primary camera for this wedding season. Uh, today we're actually going to be cooking our own potato chips, so I don't know why these are connected, but it's the thing I want to do, so let's all do it together while I talk about the, the camera. Uh, tomorrow I'm actually going to be doing part two of this same setup, and I'm going to be talking about the Tamron 35mm f1.8, which is one of my favorite lenses. had it for about five years now, and I figured it was time to review it since it is a good buy and you can find a lot of them used for really cheap and it's a very overvalued lens whenever you buy it for very inexpensive. So as I said, today we're making potato chips. Let's begin. Throughout this review, I'm just going to be showing you kind of exactly what I'm doing using this camera. All right, first what you need, you need an ice bath, get these chips. Nice, nice and chilled so they get nice and crispy when we fry them in a minute. This is just mostly water. These ice cubes are, they're just water. Throughout this cooking, I'm gonna be showing you examples from the D780, as well as doing some voiceovers for other examples. Whoa, it's a voiceover. I'm gonna start off with the only real negative of this camera, and that is that eye detect does not work when you're shooting through the actual viewfinder. So if you want eye autofocus, you have to be shooting through live view mode. So if you don't wanna look at the back of the camera, you're maybe, going to be a little bit better suited for a Z6. I will get to a little graph of the current Nikon lineup in a moment here. Other things, the JPEGs feel great straight out of camera. The files, in my experience, are a little bit more similar to the Z6 than something like a D850. The camera itself feels very substantial. USB charging is awesome. Good skin tones, as always, with all Nikon cameras. And here's the, the chart that I promised you to help you make your purchasing decision. So if you're looking for a Nikon camera right now, you might have come here because you're looking for the D780, but probably the Z6 and the D850 are also on your mind. If you are looking at the D6 as a potential competitor of this, I feel like you're maybe on the wrong video. Um, I feel like it's a very specialized instrument, the, the D6 or even the D5. And if you know you need it, you already know, you don't need this video to convince you. So I'm gonna make that go away and I'm gonna introduce a wild card. And that wild card is the predecessor to the D780, which is the Nikon D750, which is still an amazing camera. And in my opinion, the best value you can get for a digital SLR really anywhere on the market right now. So I'm gonna draw a line kind of right down the center here. And I am a hybrid shooter, which means I shoot both photography and video at most events. Um, I'm primarily a wedding shooter. So let's call this the, the photo video line. So photo video and the main camera, I guess that kind of comes in the middle. And the reason that I just really am a big fan of the Nikon D780 is that it blends kind of everything. So I'm going to put this right in the center of the line. It's not really a centered thing. Pretend that this is, this is the middle. Um, I'm going to put the D or the Z6 on this side over here, a little bit more on the video side of things can definitely do everything photo side, but I find in just experience, the EVF is a little bit slower than I want it to be when I'm photographing faster motion. Uh, the D850 is definitely on the photo side of things. And the D750 is also on the photo side of things, but I would almost kind of rank it maybe a little more of a photo camera. I feel like this, the D850 can do a little bit more when it comes to video. Um, actually, I'm quite happy with the video. I'm gonna put that like right here. So if you're a landscape shooter, you're somebody that really wants those high resolution images, this is gonna be the camera for you, the Nikon D850. If you're somebody that wants hybrid coverage, if you're an event shooter, a wedding shooter, you're gonna probably want this, especially if you're doing video. If you're not doing any video, you might wanna just look at the, the 750 over here. Uh, it also does video. I used it as a main camera for a very long time. It's been fantastic but the upgrades really kind of came when the Z6 came out. So I put the Z6 more on the video side of things simply because it really is a very, very incredibly powerful video camera. And the benefit of that camera coming out and then the Nikon D780 coming out is the fact that basically it 
kind of inherited. So as soon as you mirror up in your live view mode, you're essentially getting all the functionality of a Z6. You just do not have the electronic viewfinder. So um, those are kind of where I would rank everything. If you're if you're looking for a camera, best deal, best value for sure over here on the, the 750. Moving over here, if you need those big files, I shoot, or at least when I shot this as my main camera for weddings, I actually shot on medium raw mode, which means I was shooting like, a, I think it was a 24 megapixel file rather than the 40 plus megapixel file that I would use whenever I was out shooting landscape. So if you want that expandability, um, definitely a good thing. And at the same time, it's still a great video camera. So it could it could easily be over on this side if, if you wanted it to be. But I feel like naturally its place in the market is a little bit more on the photo side over here. Uh, 780, perfect in the center here. And then the Z6 is definitely um, a very powerful tool when it comes to video. And it will also do all the photos that you want as long as you don't want to do everything kind of really fast. I feel like um, it's still kind of gaining momentum. If, if I was shooting really fast moving wildlife or sports or anything, I would definitely be going probably with the camera that I disappeared over here, the the D6, um, which is, it, it. I guess like all of these kind of crossover. So Technically, the D6 and the, the D5 are incredibly powerful video cameras, but I feel like its place in the market is definitely um, maybe even like kind of off the grid over this way for photography. So if you're looking for very accurate autofocus, that's really great in photography, fast moving subjects, um, if you're photographing footballs or you're photographing birds or you're photographing birds on footballs, which might be an emerging market in 2020, we'll see. Um, definitely the, the D6, but you're probably not here if you want that. So uh, hybrid camera, I feel like this kind of fits perfectly in the middle here, um, electronic viewfinder, no electronic viewfinders, but you can go mirror up and in, uh, in live view mode, and yeah, we'll get back to the to the video now. Got a little potato on my lens hood here. Camera got a little bit wet. One of the things I like about it is it's pretty weather sealed. I don't know if it's officially weather sealed, but we've had it out in some rain, and I've never really felt too nervous. I'm nervous about that lens hood a lot. Well, we have a moment while our potatoes uh, get nice and cold for about a half hour. Leave them in there. We're actually going to go to a shoot that we did few days ago. It started originally as a bit of a small production where we were just gonna come in and only hijack Marshall's day. But it's quickly turned into everybody at Angus Audio helping us out. I have with me the Nikon D780, the 85mm 1.4. One of the things that I actually really, really enjoy is the, the eye tracking. So whenever you shoot through live view, so just shooting like this, I feel like it's, um, I originally I kind of pushed against the experience. I'm like real photographers shoot through the viewfinder and on a wedding day, love that viewfinder. Just out for a portrait session, I'm happy to actually shoot live view. I feel like I can frame the scene better when I actually have time to put everything together. On a wedding day, everything is just kind of so fast that you don't really have a whole lot of time to do that. So I shoot through the optical viewfinder and I really, really enjoy it. Um, EVF is also great if you're interested in the Nikon Z6. It's also an incredible camera, but I just personally prefer to have an optical viewfinder. That said, for travel and commercial, I am happy to use either. And it's kind of whatever comes down to your own preference. That if you want to get on board specifically with Nikon, it seems like most of their product development is going towards the Z series. So if you want to be getting all those new lenses and you want to be spending money and there won't be much of a used market yet, uh, by all means go with the Z6. But if you want access to the back catalog of F mount lenses that have just really come out for the past like I don't even know how many years it's on the screen right now but you have instant access to all those lenses are near instant access you can buy them used you can put them on your camera and just like go out and start creating work and it's a much more cost effective way to go about things um, rather than just buying all lenses new so depending on kind of where you're at with that the Nikon D780 really once you hit the live view button and you're in live view mode it just kind of becomes a Z6 so if you're worried about losing all the functionality of a Z6 the eye autofocus and the good video focusing um, know that you have it in this Nikon D780 as well. Another sad part for me, as somebody that makes a lot of video, is that there is no in-body stabilization. Nikon Z6 does have in-body stabilization um, with the Tamron lens that I specifically have on here. Uh, the VC in Tamron lenses essentially mean VR or IS or um, stabilization in the lens. So it acts, I would say, pretty much the same. If I put the 35 and the Tamron, the 35 for the Z series up against this, as far as shake goes, I feel like they would be pretty similar. The 35 for Z series is going to be a heck of a lot sharper edge to edge, but we'll talk about that tomorrow in the Tamron review. Ingredients that we have with us, we have some salt here. We need about 
tablespoon of salt. One of the cool things with this lens and with this camera specifically and uh, all Nikon cameras is that you can go into DX mode. So I've actually set my front button here. If I hit my front button, this little menu pops up and I can switch from full frame to DX mode back and forth. Um, so basically what that means is I can just instantly enter crop mode so that if I'm shooting an image and maybe I'm on my 7200 and 200 just isn't close enough that I can quickly go from just with this button here, go from full frame to crop mode, which gives me another, in that case, another 100 millimeters. So I'm going from a 200 to a 300. And essentially all I'm doing is cropping in the camera body. But when you're out shooting a lot of volume, if it's, for instance, a wedding day, you might as well just get everything right in camera. If that's what you want it to look like, you might as well frame it up how you want the final image to be rather than coming back home and doing all that in post-production. So here's an example of how helpful it can be. And specifically with this Tamron 35, how close you can actually get. The only thing that I do not like about this camera is just how close the white balance and the quality buttons are together, that they're right on top of each other. And I have to remap one of the other buttons, the front button down here, FN, uh, to white balance so that I'm not constantly trying to hit that button, accidentally hitting quality while I'm out shooting and not paying attention. And I've accidentally switched out of raw mode and I'm shooting at a wedding or something. Um, so I've remapped that white balance button to be somewhere else. Um, but that's really my only complaint. The other nice to have that I don't necessarily, I don't think it makes the day better or worse, is that if you're shooting something like the Nikon D850, you actually have a physical joystick to move your autofocus point around. With the D780, it's not a huge deal, but it's back to the D-pad, um, or I guess it's the same D-pad as the D750 was. And it's a bit of a pain as somebody going from the D850 back to this. Um, I found my stride specifically that I'm a, I'm a photo video creator and I am okay to let that kind of go. That's really the only thing that I'm gonna miss on my D850 as a main camera. What I pick up in this is great video autofocus. So when I'm out and actually creating video content, everything's just gonna be a lot more in focus and I'm actually able to use the autofocus and track human beings with it. Um, whereas I found with the D850, you really had to just be in manual mode all the time. So I'm very happy to be able to use autofocus in this Nikon D780. Got a few more minutes letting our, our potato chips uh, cool down here. This is a Strongbow. Um, we got on the boat to Antarctica. This is, this is going somewhere, I promise. Got on the boat to Antarctica, went up to the bar uh, at the evening. We didn't rush straight there. We did the, the whole thing, get going away party. We were like, all right, what, what do you have like stock back here? There was a boat that left from Argentina across the Drake Passage to Antarctica, and they were fully stocked with Strongbow and bows. I guess it's a UK based business of some sort, even though their marketing department is from Toronto. I don't know, either way. I've consumed a Strongbow or two in Antarctica, which really does give me some sort of an affinity towards the brand, I guess. And I'm gonna fill this up with our oil. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this oil, this peanut oil has a higher smoke point than something like, I guess most oils have a pretty high smoke point, maybe not flax or walnut or something. But basically what you're doing is you're heating this to something like, I'm gonna call it a 360 Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is in Celsius. And it was very confusing because a lot of our measurements are kind of grandfathered in through Imperial. So we'll still say some things in Imperial and then other things in metric. Overall, we're technically a metric system, but Fahrenheit exists in cooking. But then our temperature outside is Celsius. You figure it out. So I want to do about maybe, let's call it an inch and a half. See, see, we measure like, Things in inches, not centimeters, that's weird. And I'm gonna bring this up to temperature. I don't have a thermometer. The best would be just have like a little clip-on thermometer that you could put in here and make sure that it's heated up. I'm just gonna add the rest of this. Um, but if you don't have a thermometer, there's kind of two ways you can go about it. To get up to temp, you can either um, use a piece of popcorn. So if you have a, a, a kernel of corn, uh, like a hard kernel, you can put it in and if it pops, you're up to temp, or you can use a wooden spoon. And if you put a wooden spoon in here, if there's kind of like a little bit of bubbling coming off of it, that means it's like, somewhere in the ballpark of 350 Fahrenheit. If there's a lot of bubbles coming up, you're, you're over, you're gonna burn everything, it's gonna taste bad, but somewhere in that 350 range is probably good. One day I'll buy a thermometer. I've forgotten one key element. So to make this go even faster, what you can do, you have ice water, you can do this with beer as well if you ever wanna just chill something really fast. And essentially what you're doing, you're putting the ice in here, and you just put a bunch of salt in it, and it just speeds up the, the process of just making it cold. So now, I'm gonna stir that up and things are gonna get a lot colder a lot faster. Now we're gonna take the chips out, place them on this uh, paper towel, dry them off. And uh, one of the other reasons that I love the Nikon D780 is because it has two card slots. That has nothing to do with these potatoes. Um, I'm gonna leave them in for another minute while we continue to heat the oil. Uh, having two card slots and just having that instant redundancy backup 
is as a wedding shooter, incredibly important. I understand that cards fail increasingly more rare over time, especially if you're shooting the Nikon Z6, you're shooting an XQD card, which is, in my experience, I've never had any issues with them whatsoever. Um, so they're great, but just for my own peace of mind, I, I don't know, I like, to, I like to over plan a little bit or at least have over planned of my backups, especially in once in a lifetime style events. So having two card slots really does put my mind at ease. When a mirrorless body from Nikon comes out with two card slots, I'll be happy to recommend that for weddings. But until then, my number one recommendation for wedding photographers is the 780 or the Nikon D850. I would say both of them are great depending on what you wanna be doing. If you wanna be doing more video coverage, if you're more interested in doing commercial video and having a tool that's expandable into those scenes, the 780 is probably going to be your tool. If you're interested in maybe some landscape photography along with whatever you might be doing commercially here at home and you're focused primarily on photography, and then if you're somebody that wants primarily video with also amazing photos, I would put the photos easily on par from the Z6 with this camera here. Uh, but if you really want more, even more advanced video options, um, in regards to not really more advanced options, you have kind of everything that you need in here. But what the main benefit of having a Z6 is that when you have the electronic viewfinder, one, you have embodied stabilization, which is fantastic. And two, you really have a good third point of stabilization. So when you're trying to stabilize a lens, um, you basically want three points of contact. So you want this hand here, this hand here. And if you can put the viewfinder and it's an electronic viewfinder that you're seeing what you're taking like that, this is an incredibly stable way to take video. So um, that's why if you're primarily a video shooter or you know you're gonna be doing a lot of video in the future, uh, the Z6 is probably going to be my recommendation. take these potatoes out and I'm going to place them like so. Get them nice and dry. Putting the wet things into hot oil is only going to cause you burns on your face. I learned this at Outback Steakhouse. Maybe not face burns, but definitely some bubbling style hand burns with uh, the blooming onions that I used to make. Eight years I worked at the Outback Steakhouse. Good times, good memories at Outback. So the way you check to see if your oil is up to temp is you either put a, a kernel of corn in here and if it pops, it's up to temp, or you take this little, the end of your spoon, and if it gives you some nice bubbles like that, it's up to temperature. That might even be too hot, actually. I'm gonna turn that down just, just a little bit. A little, little, little too burnt. I think we're getting close. It's uh, not cooked on the inside and burnt on the outside, so try a few more times. I think that's looking okay. Really do need a thermometer for this. It would have made our life here a lot easier. All right, how's that look? It's starting to look like potato chip. A little salt mixture in here. This can all stay. Do a little, little flip. Single, single, single potato chip. And the verdict is, That's quite good. I think we've done it. Time to cook them all up. By doing this, it's gonna lower the temp of the oil just a little bit. Stir it around. It's like Christmas. A little foam party for, uh, 
potato chips. Not that our family has Christmas foam parties, but where's my phone? Michael, my potato chips. A little video clip. This is kind of how I shoot a lot of my stuff that I'm shooting both photos and videos always simultaneously, which is why this Tamron lens is so important that if you're in a commercial video situation or a commercial photo situation, um, that you're able to quickly do a video for them as well. And I feel like as a single vendor, if you're able to do that and you're able to save the money, especially a smaller kind of mom and pop shop type thing, everybody needs photos and everyone needs videos these days. So if you can do both, you're gonna get booked a lot more. Again, the weather resistance is coming in nicely because now there's all kinds of grease and all kinds of salt all over the camera. And I suspect that it will perform well for quite some time. So we have one of these to Lindsay, see what she says. What do you think? They're delicious. They're really good, babe. Uh, Richard, all right, Lindsay agrees. They are delicious. Probably I'm gonna eat all of them before we take any photos with them. Over here, I found a piece of wood, so I'm gonna put my bowls on here. And I'm gonna move this light. This is an SL60W Godox, and I have another one over here that's kinda just making a room light. And I'm gonna point this as close to this as I possibly can. So basically, that looks pretty nice right now. If I put something on here, I'm gonna have to make that more of a little pyramid, but it looks pretty good already, right? And that's with this light bouncing straight off the ceiling. If I tilt it more kind of like this, I get a little more direction. So as you can see, that's pointed at the ceiling. That's as I'm tilting down, but I don't know. Completely depends on what you want. All right, here we go. This is the, they're gonna be the chip bowl and then I'm gonna have this off to the side and I'm gonna have my rock salt. It's in the mix over there. On this side, I'm gonna do a little overhead and just get that, get that nice quintessential, uh, that nice food shot of my chips. And then I'm gonna, this is just for personal, the personal use that I wanna eat uh, some horseradish mayo. It's gonna be amazing. Here we go, a little flip. It's a potato chip flip. They're everywhere. Thing I sanitized before we began. Video quality of this Nikon D780. Absolutely fantastic. Up close abilities of this Tamron 35 handheld. Also absolutely fantastic. I shoot everything for the most part. It's very rare to see me use any sort of stabilizer. So everything that you see me ever shoot is usually handheld. And this makes it just easy enough to let me do my job without actually needing a stabilizer. And if you want to stop down heavily, you can, uh, you can do that to add a little more depth into your, into your scene here. The thing I want to touch on here is the D lighting in Nikon cameras. It is always fantastic. I run it for video, usually at extra high. So that might be a controversial opinion, but what I like it for is when I'm shooting video, I don't want to shoot flat profile. I don't want to shoot any sort of log format. I want to shoot what my final video actually is going to look like. So I spend a little bit more time getting it as right as I can in actual camera. Sometimes that's actually impossible just based on conditions, but most of the time, 98% of the time, you're able to get it where you don't have to do a whole lot of color correction. Um, this speeds my workflow up immensely and delighting uh, on extra high or on high is definitely something worth experimenting to see if it works with your style. Thank you so much for joining me here on my Nikon D780 review making potato chips here in, in the home. Hope that you enjoyed and I will see you, uh, see you on another time. Thanks for watching my review today. And again, if this does happen to be the first week of April, 2020, April 1st until April 11th, it's a week in a little bit, all of my courses are available if you sign up for one single month on Patreon. So you get access to all kinds of courses, more than I could ever possibly say here, $2,000 plus worth of stuff. My introvert's guide to wedding photography posing, off-camera flash, uh, pricing course, my contract, my pricing, my presets, all kinds of different things. So come on over, check it out. It's definitely, if you're only going to sign up for one month and you're not signed to a year contract or anything, but if you're only going to sign up for one single month, this is the month to do it and specifically this little time window. So come on over and invest in yourself in this strange and interesting time where you'll hopefully actually have time to implement everything that you're learning uh, over on Patreon. Thanks for watching. See you next time.